Recording in progress. So, as always, the first step of meditation is to turn off your cell phone. And uh, if you would, and, and uh, uh, whatever else, if you have smart watches and smart socks and uh, uh, anything smart should be quiet. <laughs> and so go ahead and find our meditation posture. Looking for that posture that's comfortable enough that you won't need to move. And we will actually try not to move. But not so comfortable that you fall asleep. And so you can actually adjust your posture based on your alertness level. And if you're exhausted, you might want to get a Zafu down on the floor or sit pretty like a back off the back of the chair. And the more alert you are, the more comfortable you can safely be. And we'll start by bringing the attention to the breath as we often do. And as I say pretty much every week, we're meditating in the city, and so it's usually pretty loud in here. And so we'll, we'll try to have a little gratitude for all these outside sounds. As we try to control the attention, bring it to the breath, it's pretty hard to let go of the inside sounds. They're quite distracting, engrossing. It's pretty easy to let go of people going up the stairs and just heard somebody emptying their recycling out there. So each of these outside noises, if they distract you, we just extend them a little gratitude. Thanks for being such an easy distraction. And then we'll come right back. And one thing to play with as we do the breath is the amount of effort. So you can play with it at the extremes. This won't feel awesome, so we'll just do it quickly, but you can try really grabbing onto the breath. For like one breath here, don't lose it. And then try the other extreme. Uh, just relax. Don't do anything. Sometimes, depending on the state of your mind, this relaxation practice actually gets great concentration. The try too hard practice basically never gets good concentration. And then p play around with the in-betweens. In general, less effort's better. But if you haven't done much training of your mind, or if your mind this evening is behaving as though it hasn't had a lot of training, even though it has had plenty, 
then no effort will actually just leave you spacing out. So I'd play with how much do you need to put in in order to remember what you're doing, not just space out.
So, uh, the next part of the meditation's going to be more challenging. So, if your mind is not behaving very well tonight, or if you don't totally understand what my instructions are for the second part, I would just stay with the breath. Uh, we've done a few meditations <clears throat> looking at emotions. We did one uh, two weeks ago, I think, trying to name the emotions. What we're going to do tonight is a, a pure mindfulness practice, meaning we are only trying to observe. And the thing we're trying to observe is sensations in the body of expansion or contraction. Another way of saying it would be things that feel like crunching or releasing. Sometimes the crunching stuff looks either black or opaque, and the releasing stuff looks like glass or like translucent. So it's a choiceless awareness sort of practice, meaning we drop the breath and we just feel what's going on in the body. And if we feel the breath, we just let it be there. And if you feel your shirt, you just let it be there. And if something feels either like it's contracting and crunching, or like it's releasing and expanding, uh, just observe that thing. When I, I say pure mindfulness practice, what I mean is, as you'll quickly notice, if you get the expanding sensations, they usually feel pretty awesome. And if you get the crunching sensations, they usually feel pretty lousy. And as soon as your mindset becomes, get rid of the crunchy ones, replace them with the expanding ones. That's what meditation's about. In fact, that's aversion, and it's the opposite of what meditation's about. So you'll, you'll uh, assuredly find, as, as the Buddha taught and so many since then, when you find crunching sensations and just observe them and let them be there, they're really like, a minor nuisance and nothing more. It's that thing where you try to make them go away that hurts, that burns. And similarly, if you get expanding sensations, trying to make them stick around just hurts. So there'll be some days, there'll be some sits where either the attention's uh, sensory clarity is not very sharp and so you don't really get a lot of either of these sensations, or any sometimes. And, and there'll be days where it's pretty much just crunching, crunching. Your neck feels tight, and your shoulders feel tight, and it feels like there's a muscle knot in your head in a place where there's definitely not an actual muscle, and so on. You will not get to a place where it's just nice, translucent, bubbly, expandy sensations forever. So, our goal is to get used to having a mind that does crunchy things and expandy things. That's what it's going to keep doing. So that's the idea of the technique. The technique itself is going to open awareness, focusing on the body. If you feel something that seems like it's getting bigger or getting smaller, focus on it. If it disappears or becomes stagnant, go back to open awareness. So open awareness is this monitoring of the body. We're trying to cultivate equanimity towards these sensations. There's a lot of tricks for doing that. One is recognizing the certainty that whatever sensation you have, you're going to have that again. And so it's really, even if you could make it go away, it's not a terribly useful skill because it'll be back and back and back and back. 
So when we recognize our goal here is to learn to live with, to learn to uh, accept, get along with, abide with, be good neighbors with, all of the sensations that arise. That goal helps undercut the aversion, trying to control it in ways that you can. And just trying to learn to live in and live with the sensations we're experiencing. And one more thing that will help with that is to try to hold your body still. That's a mindfulness practice in and of itself. And sometimes you'll forget and move and, and uh, probably no one will notice and, and we all forgive you. But try to hold the body still. If the body's still, there's much more observing of the sensations. The movement of the body is usually trying to improve the sensations. That's funny, I was just going to talk about outside sounds. You might notice with the outside sounds that they themselves will produce expansion and contraction. There was what sounded like a pretty good rap song and, and my body felt more expansive with it. And then the TV upstairs, I didn't much like it and I felt some contraction against it.
Sometimes when the contraction's a lot, I'll get this thought that I can't take it. And and one thing I've noticed is that the thought that I can't take it seems to have no correlation at all with whether I can or can't take something.
And <clears throat> uh, so the, the second direction was harder than the first. The, the third is going to be even more obscure. I would think for quite a lot of folks, uh, the directions won't entirely make sense. So uh, stick with number one or number two, if you don't uh, quite understand number three. The idea for number three is there's this expansion and contraction in the body. There's also this expansion and contraction in the mind. Some phenomena make the mind feel really tight. Another way of saying it is the sense of self feels really tight. So if something's painful, the fact that you can feel the fuzz of your socks and your breath going in and out, it doesn't really matter. That painful thing is going to be what's defining this moment, even though there's an awful lot of sensation. So this is what I mean by the mind getting tiny. And then sometimes the mind gets pretty expanded. Nothing really feels like it defines you all that much. If I asked how you're doing, that question might actually be a little hard. There'd be so many answers. So uh, it's a pretty advanced practice. Uh, feel free to not do it. But if, if the instructions do make some sense, uh, you can give this a shot as well. And it's the same idea with equanimity. Uh, the mind is just going to expand and contract and expand and contract. I think theoretically until you become the Buddha, which probably not going to happen this weekend. So we get used to sometimes having a mind that feels broad, expanded, often likened to being the ocean rather than a wave, a blue sky rather than the cloud. And other times we'll just get so zoomed in on staring at the clouds, zoomed in on staring at the wave, that we forget there's a sky or an ocean, and everywhere in between. For most people it's going to take some retreat practice to be able to watch the mind expand and contract like that. I always think of guiding meditations uh, like the way the teacher guides yoga where you kind of start out touching your knees is option number one and option number four is like hanging upside down from the ceiling. And, and so if you're following this last step, one funny thing you might notice is there might not be all that much similarity between the crunching expanding body sensations and the crunching expanding mind sensations. As in, like, it's possible something in your body feels real tight and terrible and your mind feels pretty open and chill around it. 